I always had good success in both Australia and New Zealand, but with they are slightly different. In Australia, <clears throat> the pictures tend to be truer, they tend to be a little bit quicker. So what you have to do is drag your lens back just a little bit after the new ball. But with the new ball, you can try and bowl as full as possible as you can risk, just as a chance with a swinging ball, you're taking early wickets. But once the new ball goes, you have to drag your lens back, really drag it back, and ball it hit the pitch hard. There's nothing for just placing it on a length. Really hit that pitch hard. Like Glenn McGrath used to, like Sean Pollock used to, and like I used to to a certain extent, for a shortish guy, I really hit that pitch just back of what you call a normal length in the conditions. In New Zealand, slightly different. I think because the pitches tend to just offer a little bit of resistance throughout the day for the seamer, you try and bowl that a little bit fuller. Um, okay, if you're playing an absolute flat pitch, it's similar to Australia where you drag it back a little bit. But more often than not, most of the pitches and most of the grounds in New Zealand, there's a little bit of a system, whether it be off the pitch or whether it be in the air. Like I said, it has been around a while. I mean, they were doing it. South African batsmen were doing it a long time ago. Um, I remember playing some games. There's the guy who used to play for um, Cape Cobras, uh, used to open the batting. Uh, he's Jonathan Trott's relative. Uh, his half brother, I forgot his name, but he really used to sweep uh, the fast bowlers. Uh, a guy called Rudy Bryson, who was a fast bowler, but he used to sweep the bowlers as well. Um, and he's a difficult thing to bowl at. But my biggest concern with bowlers in this day and age is that they have a plan at the end of their runner. They run in and they bowl it no matter what the batsman does. Now, what I try to teach and what I do is... When you're bowling, you should be able to change right up to the last fraction of a second what you're going to bowl to what the batsman's doing. Now, if the batsman goes all the way outside leg stump to give himself room, you as a bowler then have got two options and you've got to make a decision quickly. The decision is do you bowl for the stumps and back yourself to get a perfect yorker in and knock your stumps out because he's going to be away from the ball and the odds on him getting a clean connection are the very thing. Now, you work on the other option is, do you bowl it six uh, foot outside the off stump where he can't reach it and you end up trying to get in a dot ball more often than not? That's what you're going to do. So now if the batsman gets into a sweep position and he, you've got a short sweep man and no fine leg, what are the options? The options are to bowl a wider, slower ball, Wider slow ball, so he can't get no momentum on it, he can't get no pace off the ball, or you bowl a full Yorker, either either at his um, outside off stump, where he's still in a position where he can't really get his body out of the way. The problem is, people, bowlers these days, they're making their plans at the end of the run-up, and no matter what the batsmen do, they stick into that plan. You have got to change uh, right up to the last second. Yeah. But there wasn't. I used to adjust in one day cricket many months ago when I played. The problem is in test cricket, yes, you can set up a batsman, and that still goes on now and it always will in test cricket. You will have a plan. In one day cricket, though, in 50 overs or T20 especially, you cannot have a, you've got to have a genuine plan, of course you have, but you do not stick to that plan. You do not stick to it if a batsman starts ramp sweeping you, fine sweeping you getting outside leg stump, smashing it through the offside, going across his stumps and heaving to leg. You know what I mean? You've got to change, be changeable as a bowler. You've got to be thinking on your feet. You cannot set, try and set a batsman over and say, this is where we're going to bowl to, to De Villiers. Because De Villiers will come out and they will try and put you off your game plan. So you as a bowler have got to change when he changes. And not, especially England, our bowlers in England watching them the other day were terrible again. They have a game plan. They have this game plan of bowling wide uh, Yorkers or they have another game plan of bowling slow ball bouncers. I'm sorry. Our bowlers don't bowl good enough slow ball bouncers. And they haven't got good enough slow balls. So straight away we're on the back foot. Um, one of the bowlers I'm really impressed with, um, and, and I think it's the new brand of fast bowlers that's going to be coming out, 
this mill from New Zealand. I see he's just got um, a contract in the IPL. He's a very, very good bowler. And he backs us, Southie and Bolt. I think New Zealand is a bowling attack. They've got everything. They've got two bowlers with a new ball who pitch the ball up. They'll look to take wickets. And then they've got Mill to come on who's uh, got serious pace. And he looks to bowl aggressive. Um, he can bowl short. He can bowl full. He's got a good slow ball. So New Zealand as a team, I think their bowling attack is complete. Because then to top that off and balance it all up, you've got... Daniel Vittori, who for me is still the best spinner in the World Cup. 